with the economy humming along and the stock market, despite some recent twists and turns, hanging in there pretty well, it's a tough case to sell that higher interest rates are having a substantially negative impact on the economy. So what if policymakers just decide to keep rates where they are for even longer, and go through all of 2024 without cutting? It's a question that, despite the current conditions, makes Wall Street shudder and Main Street queasy as well. When rates start climbing higher, there has to be an adjustment, said Quincy Crosby, chief global strategist at LPL Financial. The calculus has changed, so the question is, are we going to have issues if rates remain higher for longer? The higher for longer stance was not what investors were expecting at the beginning of 2024, but it's what they have to deal with now as inflation has proven stickier than expected, hovering around 3% compared to the Fed's 2% target. Recent statements by Fed Chair Jerome Powell and other policymakers have cemented the notion that rate cuts aren't coming in the next several months. In fact, there even has been talk about the potential for an additional hike or two ahead if inflation doesn't ease further. That leaves big questions over when exactly monetary policy easing will come, and what the central bank's position to remain on hold will do to both financial markets and the broader economy. Crosby said some of those answers will come soon as the current earnings season heats up. Corporate officers will provide key details beyond sales and profits, including the impact that interest rates are having on profit margins and consumer behavior. If there's any sense that companies have to start cutting back costs and that leads to labor market trouble, this is the path of a potential problem with rates this high, Crosby said. But financial markets, despite a recent 5.5% sell-off for the S&P 500, have largely held up amid the higher rate landscape. The broad market, large cap index is still up 6.3% year to date in the face of a Fed on hold, and 23% above the late October, 2023 low. History tells differing stories about the consequences of a hawkish Fed, both for markets and the economy. Higher rates are generally a good thing so long as they're associated with growth. The last period when that wasn't true was when then-Fed Chair Paul Volcker strangled inflation with aggressive hikes that ultimately and purposely tipped the economy into recession. There is little precedent for the Fed to cut rates in robust growth periods such as the present, with gross domestic product expected to accelerate at a 2.4% annualized pace in the first quarter of 2024 which would mark the seventh consecutive quarter of growth better than 2%. Preliminary first quarter GDP numbers are due to be reported Thursday. In the 20th century, at least, it's tough to make the argument that high rates led to recessions.